so something funny? Yeah, something funny over here. <laughs> to share with the group? So, I could use some good humor. What was the emphasis of practice to me? Was that the first question? <laughs> if you're not going to share, I'm not going to share with you. I mean, I know it's the uh, holiday season. Uh, uh, yeah. Point of emphasis today was um, got so many guys banged up, did, did no live stuff, stayed away from contact, watched some film from the last game, uh, some cleanups where we have to get better at. And then just uh, got a lot of shots, a lot of player development, uh, a few defensive drills, and some uh, script on the offense. Knowing we have tomorrow to maybe try to get one live segment in um, as we prepare for Washington on Wednesday night, but just trying to get our guys mentally and physically in a good place. I know you don't look this far ahead, um, but I think you guys are home six, they're on the road, out of your bed six nights out of the next 50 days or something like that. What, is, what does that do for you, being able to be home? And do you look at that stretch and say, hey, here's an opportunity for us to do this? My wife doesn't like that. <laughs> so, uh, absence makes the heart grow fonder, so she's not going to be a big fan of that. Um, but yeah, I think obviously we've proven last year with 25 road wins, this year nine and seven so far, um, you know, that we're able to go on the road and win. Um, but now our challenge is if we have all these home games and we've gotten through a tough start to the season regarding our schedule, we have to find a way to take advantage of this. So we're seven and three at home right now. Uh, last year, we, we did not do nearly a good enough job of protecting our home court, and uh, that's going to be our challenge. No matter who we have coming in here, use the altitude, use our fans, and, and make sure we're doing everything in our, um, you know, possible nature to, to protect that home court. And I told our guys today, I said, listen, right now our defense is ranked 26. In clutch games, we have the number one defense. The last two fourth quarters, our defense has been great. So you're showing me that you can do it, but now the challenge is to do it a lot more often, a lot more consistently. And if we're able to do that, Adam, then I think we can go on a run where we protect our home court and win at a high level. What happens in the clutch defensively? Like, what do you see change? I, I think, you know, the urgency. I think the discipline, the aggressiveness, the communication, all the things that you need um, to win close games. And, and again, you know, I made sure our guys understood what clutch games were. Any game within five in the last five minutes of uh, the fourth quarter. And we've been in quite a bit of those. And uh, to, to rely upon your defense in those games is terrific because we know offensively we have the number three offense in the NBA. We're pretty good on that end. The turnovers are the one area that we have to clean up. But if our defense, like, we have to chip away. I said, let's go from 26 to 22. Let's go from 22 to 18. Let's go from 18 to 15. So uh, that, that's our, our, our main focus right now, is finding ways to be a lot better on that end of the floor. Do you think the team's procrastinating kind of at the beginning just because of how road heavy this schedule has been so far? Uh, like in, to start games? Uh, yeah, with the defensive side. Um, a good question. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, that's been a common theme is that we kind of come out like against Utah, it's just, you know, bang, bang, bang. They hit seven threes in the first quarter. Rest of the game, we actually did a pretty good job defending the three, but um, I think Jamal said it after the game. Kind of like, all right, well, no marketing, no Clarkson, no Conley, no Sexton. And as much as I try, don't relax. Golden opportunity. Come out ready to play. And Jamal said it's kind of human nature for some of the players to kind of relax. And we have to find a way to avoid that. But I'm not sure if it's procrastinating. I'm not sure if it's, hey, we can turn it on in the fourth quarter. We can outscore teams because our offense is elite, uh, but it's just not good enough, whatever the reasons are, Ryan. We have to come out in that first quarter like we have been guarding in the fourth quarter as of late. Coach, we asked um, Aaron Gordon how he's evolved this year and how it's coming together. Uh, and he said, you know, I feel like I'm kind of the glue right now. Do you think that's an apt description of what, what he's given to this team right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, it's been great glue. You know, I mean, it's been, uh, I think he's playing um, just phenomenal basketball because he's doing it every night. How consistent Aaron Gordon has been, um, how he really has just kind of checked his ego out the door and said, well, I'm going to do whatever I can to help this team. And for him to, re to refer to himself as a glue um, part of this team says a lot about him. Um, and I love it because he's bought into our culture. He's bought into, hey, I know we got Jamal and Michael back. I know we have Nicole Jokic. My number may not be called in terms of play calls, but I can impact the game in a lot of different ways without any plays being called for me. I can run the floor in transition. 
I can sit at the rim and, and finish strong. His finishing numbers, his shots around the rim, his aggressiveness, his rebounding, his playmaking, his three-point shooting, uh, he's just impacting the game in so many levels right now, and uh, it's been really fun to watch. What does this team look like defensively if they at least met you halfway on what this team could be, start to finish? Well, if we if we played start to finish, I think we'd be uh, probably a top ten defense. You know, I, I think again, if, if you're if we have the number one clutch defense in the NBA by far, and we've been in quite a few of those games this night, like it's one or two games, um, you're showing me what you're able to do. The challenge now is to do it a lot more consistently and a lot closer to 48 minutes. So if, if we find a way to do it more consistently with more discipline, then I think you go from 26 in defensive rating, probably to, if not top 10, the top half of the NBA. And if you can be a top 15 defense with a top one, two or three offense, now you have a chance to, to do big things. Now you have a chance to make a deep playoff run because you don't have any weaknesses. And, uh, and that's our challenge. I mean, we're 26 games in, I believe, and uh, trust me, it's something we talk about every day, we show every day, we drill every day. And I have to remind myself, part of it could also be, we have eight new players. And I think if we had the same exact team back and we went from 15th to 26th, that'd be really concerning. Right now it's a concern, but I also remind myself that Bruce is new, DeAndre is new, KCP is new, all of our young guys are new. And sometimes it takes a little bit for guys to really understand the defensive assignments and have the discipline to go out there and execute those every single night. How's uh, how's Michael doing? Did he, Good. Was he do anything at practice? Right yeah, he was, uh, he was able to you know, uh, once again, we did a lot, of, a lot of PD, a lot of shooting today. So today was the first day that Michael participated in parts of practice. Uh, so he's definitely feeling better. Uh, I don't think he'll be ready for Wednesday night, uh, but just having him in practice, having him in the drills, seeing him out here shooting the ball was, uh, was great to have him back for as much as, as he was able to do today. And hopefully as we progress through the week, we can kind of uh, expose him to some more drills and some more contact to try to get him back on that court. Is his the kind of injury that you have to, I don't know if it's cautious is the word, but make sure that it, you don't just throw him out there all at once and have it flare back? Yeah, I think, you know, one thing we kind of make sure we always do with all of our players is we're not going to rush a guy back. Um, obviously, Michael's a starter. He's a big piece of what we're doing. But uh, when you have the injury that he has to his heel, uh, it makes it very hard to move on the floor. And if, you know, the one thing I would never want for any player, not just Michael Porter <coughs> Jr., is if you're not able to go out there and play your game effectively and help our team, then you shouldn't be out there. And so he'll come back when he's able to go out there and play his game and he feels that that heel injury has healed enough for him to go out there and help us win uh, as many games as we can. Did DeAndre Jordan get any imaging done on his finger? What's the status with that? Yeah, he was able to go through practice okay. today. Um, you know, he's got it wrapped. I think it's pretty sore. That was one of the reasons, Katie, that we wanted to really eliminate a lot of the up and down and contact exposures because Jamal's knee, he's been getting hit there recently. Jeff's knee, KCP, his wrist, DeAndre, his thumb, as well as guys like Nicola, Aaron, and Bruce have played a lot of minutes. So. I, I think eight years ago when we had a three-day break, I probably would have wanted to practice three hours a day. <laughs> and then we get to Wednesday night and we'd be tired. And I'd be saying, why are we so tired? Well, because we just left our fight in the gym. So I think how we use these days is really important. So tomorrow we'll ramp it up a little bit, but be smart getting ready for our Wednesday.